Don't worry, honestly. Just that laughing fit. Yeah. Mm. I'm happy for you. You don't have a lot to laugh, right? Go back to laugh before, rather than joy. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, well, just want to embargo section today, just for the dailies, with having an embargo until 10:30 again tonight. Now, signal when that period begins. Billy, do you want to go first? Yeah, Jürgen, we'll start with team news. Uh, John Henderson obviously wasn't involved in midweek. Is he available to play this weekend? And James Milner, does he have to go through concussion protocols? And is he okay to play this weekend as well? So, Henlo, yes, he's available. Um, uh, trained yesterday, completely normal. So, should be fine. Um, it was only a little thing, but serious enough to um, not involve him in the last game. Yes, and you answered the question already pretty much yourself. When you go through a concussion protocol, you are not available for the next game because you have to go to different stages. He's completely he's fine, eh? um, but still, that's how it is, and it's how it is rightly so. Um, you have to go to different stages, and that means he is available for non-contact training on Monday and full contact training on Tuesday if everything goes well until then um, and that's what we expect because he was actually um, yesterday already good we saw the impact that Darwin made when he came on the substitute it's five goals in his last seven now and he seems to be someone who seems more certain of himself more, more sure of, of, of his role in the side and that confidence and the progression seems to be Improving week by week. I mean, what difference are you seeing in in him at the minute in his all-round game? Yeah, big steps, big steps, and still space for improvement because the boy is an incredible package. But um, the, um, you could see immediately he's a, he's a real he's a real threat in 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 the, in the finishing area, involved in a lot of things. That's why you then realize how a few big chances he missed. Um, imagine he would have. Um, scored from them as well so he's involved in pretty much everything he's always um, an option to, to pass through to cross the ball to these kind of things he came on didn't play uh, extremely long but involved in both goals um, which is good um, and yeah so big steps absolutely the season so far has been contrast when you look at your five definitely in the Champions League you've beaten the form team in Europe in midweek you've beaten City twice the season as well. When you take all that into account, how big a moment do you feel this is in the season? Because you've got the opportunity to follow up a, a win in the, in the week, the way you bounce back from those two defeats in the, in the Premier League. You've got the chance now to close the gap on Spurs to seven points. And it feels like it could be a big moment, a big opportunity to build a little bit of momentum going into towards that international. Yeah, big game for us, massive game for us, and it's difficult as well. Um, no Spurs away. Um, yeah, you, everything you said is right. So the, uh, I, I didn't count out the points distance between us and them, but it's uh, uh, we cannot we cannot be picky with um, opponents and games and where we want to get points. We we have to we have to go for it definitely. But it's difficult. We all know that Tottenham is a, a, a side that's well organised, um, defending um, um, extremely high level. So. Um, and counter-attacking is a massive thing. Now, the last two games we had to chase the game and we saw um, the, the offensive um, power as well. So, um, I think Spurs um, put in a good moment. So, they had uh, um, turned now two important games uh, around the last minute and especially the last one was, was a really big one uh, for Tottenham. And um, so, we are, we are prepared for a confident, um, strong opponent. Um, Tottenham was your first ever game, I think, wasn't it, for Liverpool? You've done relatively well against them over the last, I think you were beaten in nine. So that one before the nine, that was the game at Wembley that seemed, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's a million miles away, maybe from now in terms of good Champions League games either side and then maybe it's a blip and then it seems to be around that time. Can you see any similarities from that sort of period to now in terms of really well and then a blip and then just to put things into perspective you mean when we lost 4-0 or what? 4-1 at Wembley oh 4-1 or most scored most scored <laughs> the first half one of the 400 goals he scored against Tottenham in a 4-1 um, yeah, yeah I took Dion off you, you had that really research huh? 
But I remember that as well, by the way, because I had Dejan the next day in the office. <laughs> Uh, but I asked him to come in until he um, knocked on my door. Um, uh, hmm. I thank God I cannot feel anymore what happened four years or whenever it was ago. Um, but the situation, what we have is so like we see um, what we are capable of doing in, 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 in specific ways, really big games, good games, stuff like this. But then it's a lot of games and we have to always do it to freak a little bit who can play again, who is not aware of it. It's not, it was never now like, yeah, same lineup again. Come on, let's go from here. So it, I don't think we had that chance a lot of times, um, these kind of things. So we, that's why it's, it's probably, but I, I can't remember that, what, what was around that, this game, to be honest. Um, and, but it's like this, if you are not... If you are not consistent, then there's always a reason for it, and, and very often it's a it's a it's a reason with availability. Who can you who can you play? How often can they play? Blah blah blah. All these kind of things, and that's one of one, not the only, but one of the reasons why we don't are not consistent. If it was that that time as well, um, then um, there are similarities. If not, then not. So we are. I, I the problem is with if you to to explain wins it's really easy because nobody listens really because I was in a great mood and it's like you're just smiling and oh, it's, it's good shape um, explaining when you lose is much more difficult because each word is really important but it's that you cannot oh, at least I don't have five million different words for it if you want to get out of something you first have to get through it and that's where we are so and it might take time but it doesn't mean we, we don't say now Tottenham is too early for us to, to really show up already. No, it's not. We are there. We go there and want to be at our best 100%. But sitting here now and being 1000% convinced, yes, and we will. What I can tell you, it never was before going to Tottenham that I thought, good moment to face Tottenham. Let's smash them. It was never the case. Uh, it's a difficult place to go. A really good team extremely well coached um, and a real fighting unit so there are no friendly games against them Antonio is on his toes uh, on the sideline the players are in challenges and blah 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 all these kind of things so it will be a tough one but that's how that's what we actually all want it's like a Champions League game in the Premier League uh, so um, and that's how we will um, approach it you know, in terms of when you said nobody listens when you win do you mean Oz. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can now say you generally doesn't. Don't. And does that mean listen. you have to be more careful in terms of what you say for with every word? Or I can I cannot. I, I, I no, not careful. I'm not sure if I should be more careful. No, it's not about that. It's just like I can imagine that people in a in a, in a phase like this it takes a bit longer. So um, they are always the same, fighting and doing this and all oh, again and these kind of things. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Without fighting, we shouldn't even try. Um, yes, we have to fight through this. That's the case. That's how it is. You cannot play through it. You cannot say, now, by the way, forget the defending stuff. Let's just circle around them and, and these kind of things. Pass the ball through them. Nutmegs here, back heels there. That's not how it works. So, And that's why we are um, in the mood we are. And it's, it's absolutely okay. Um, and of course, that it, it's rather good that in between... You lose against Leeds, and I couldn't have felt worse. No chance. Um, but then you play a good game against a team in form, and that gives you a lift. That's normal. Completely. Bam. Here we go. And now we play Tottenham, and now we try to make sure that we feel like after the Napoli game. Thank you, Julia. Is it as easy, Jürgen, as saying that you raise your game, the team raises its game against bigger, better opposition? Like Napoli, like in Manchester City. But it didn't only do that. We won. Uh, Bournemouth is doing ten, thank God really well after that. But we played nine, won nine nil against Bournemouth and, and, and against Rangers. It's not only then. But <laughs> our our problem, why we changed systems and why we did all these kind of things, is one is the availability of players. The other thing is like we 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 were, we were not as solid defensively as we, as we used to be. So, and you can always point the finger in the thing in the, in the, the things you don't do well and say, okay, this was not good, this was not good. We have to improve this. We have to improve that. Or you give them a completely new textbook, 
So and that's what we tried with changing the system. So now it's not about how did be last game. So it's it's like a new chapter. Okay, in this system we do it like this, 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 this. You don't compare it with the last one. So like a positive um, start um, and to make sure to help the boys because that's actually my main job to help the boys to to do what they do in the, in the most confident way and manner. And um, that's why we did that. And because. Our problem in these moments were, was was defending actually as a as a team as a unit, and that's why I said now the last game we defended Napoli extremely well, a football playing side, uh, but we closed exactly right gaps. Everybody was involved, chasing from the back. Um, our counter press was really good. We had a high last line, that means we were high up in, in midfield, so we really could be around these situations, the football things, um, and that's why. Um, it's not the system gave us opportunity to defend better. No, we defended in a system better, in which we didn't defend that well five six weeks ago. Um, since we played it last time, and and that's it. We have to defend on incredibly high level, and then sometimes. Um, and now the, the big challenge, obviously, even if we defend really well, we have to attack as well. And now against Tottenham, um, counter attacks are a real threat, a real strength of them. And um, so you need to be well protected, all these kind of things. So it's not you can, that you can close in football one door or one or solve one problem relatively, or yeah, relatively like, like it's pretty likely that you um, open another problem in that moment, another gap in football and um, these kind of things. And that's why we are um, trying and trying and trying. And um, with all the things we know about football, in the end you have to play the game. And um, the next game is Tottenham and I'm looking forward to it. You're welcome. Hi. Hi Jürgen. Hi. Uh, different competition than other, but, but how much of a step forward was that defensively to get a clean sheet against Napoli? I, I know in some terms it, it was a dead rubber. But, but in terms of this game didn't look for a second leg at that, Rob, I, I would mean, say. It's solving the defensive difficulties that, that you, you've had from, from the start of the season. No, it's margins. It's margins. We conceded. We didn't concede a, a goal in that game for, what was it, an armpit? I, I, um, yeah. So, look, that's how it is. Um, it, it, there's not, it's, it's not, it's, it's, the difference between not conceding and not conceding is sometimes armpit. So that's how it is. I don't I don't know. It, it's not that I think we defended in the best possible way, but it was a set piece. All the rest, when you considering how how good Napoli is um, in this moment in time, how how easy it looks in moments when they play. This is the 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 the, the, the analyze of Napoli was a pure joy from a football point of view because everything they do works out in the moment it's crazy the way they the way they score goals where they score the goals uh, the, the minute in highest tempo all these kind of things so and the challenge was to to deny that and we did that we did that in a, in a really in a really good way so that's good obviously but it's not no news to me that we can do that so we just have to do it again. So that's how it is. And again, and again, and again. That's how it is. But it's a different game. Napoli is offensively orientated team. At Tottenham, it's not 100% clear how they will get into this game. Uh, okay, it's a home game. And last two games, what well, I mean, they had to chase it. It was an obvious change of approach before that. It was rather well organized and a bit deeper defending and going for counter attack. So we have to expect pretty much both. Um, but one will be sure when we have the ball, they will be really compact and will be really um, difficult to play against. That's clear with a 5-3-2 maybe. Um, and that's, that's, that, that's the challenge now. It's no, You cannot compare it. And yes, it's important that we did it. Of course it's important. And again, the, the game didn't look like a second. Uh, for a second like a dead rubber. Both teams really went for it. It was really intense. And um, that's what I liked about it because it could have been a boring nil-nil and even as long as it was nil-nil, it was not boring. How much of a step forward was midweek for Fabinho? Yeah. Because somebody <laughs> by his very own high standards yeah. has struggled this season and it's, it's something that's difficult. It's good, it's absolutely good. The game was a clear sign of, um, of Fabinho, how we know him. It um, um, was a good game, but we, we had we defended in all positions uh, on a different level to the, to the week before. Um, and so... Yes, what was good. Um, felt good. You could, for him, very important. 
to realize that that's possible as well and that was a good start in the right direction. Carl? Can I just go back to the, the circumstances of Milner's injury? Um, concussion is, is obviously a major thing in all sport now, and you've had experience of it with the carriers in the Champions League final. Just wondering how you think those are, how it can be dealt with differently when it happens on the pitch? Because there's been a couple of instances recently where there's been criticism of how clubs have made a hand. I'm not saying that this is his fault. No, 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 I know. Uh, oh, it's difficult. Uh, it's it's oh, not that easy because you need two sources. One is the doctor, one is the, the patient. That's how it always is. I'm not sure anybody of you had already a concussion. I had it once or twice in my life. And um, so and I feel different. And um, or they felt different. And um, for me, it was clear. He got he got a real check on the pitch. It was fine uh, in the first place when it happened. Um, in the dressing room, without meeting, Millie was completely fine. I spoke yesterday to him. I thought it's one hundred percent okay, um, and came out. Now after calming down, came out and the flat light. <laughs> like whoop, what's going on here? So and then he realized, and that's then obviously the most important source that the player realized. Ah, that's not that's not good, so we have to stop. That was more when we stopped. Then he was sat down and we took him off, obviously. So um, I don't think it can be really deal differently with it because usually a doctor gets on the pitch, and if, if the doctor and doctors are like this, if they feel, um, oh hey, he's not all right, then it's immediately gone. There's no chance for the player to say, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. But we count my fingers or whatever, whatever tests they are doing. So. Um, that everybody takes it really seriously, really seriously. Nobody wants to push a player through with a with a concussion and think, yeah, that's an old. What was that with with Mr. Clough? Was it was it him or another coach when a when a player? How is he? How, he got he got a knock. He doesn't know who is. Tell him he's Pili and send him back. <laughs> it's a good joke, but we don't do that nowadays anymore. Yeah. Um, was he Clough? Me, yeah? Okay, it's a good one. Um, yeah, that's it. We, we really take it seriously. That, that's definitely the case. And it was the first moment that we, that everybody knew, and especially Millie knew, okay, that's it. And here we stop. I guess that's the highlight the difficulties of diagnosing concussion because you don't know when it's going gonna, gonna to kick it off. off the middle. There's quite a gap between you getting the blow and then feeling the effects. And there's been talk of, you know, sort of temporary fixes like. You, you obviously have access to a concussion substitute, but there's been people sort of suggesting you have a temporary substitute while someone is assessed and all sorts of ways of getting around it. But is that a viable option, do you think? You just got to carry it to work on the basis of the, the deal? Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's in high performance sports on the pitch. Um, Surrounded by 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe 100,000 people, um, I think it's typical enough to do it in a in a in a close environment in a in a in a, in a medical praxis. So to figure it out immediately, so you need a few tests probably. So that how I said, two sources: doctor and and player, and everybody takes it serious. I mean, the player is dizzy, then he's off. Um, first in the first moment, immediately done. And um, when a doctor has the feeling that um, he's not right, then he's off. It's the quickest we can do. What do we, what shall we do else? What, what else shall we do? I know when you say now temporary subs, I'm fine with the with the concussion sub. Absolutely fine. Take him off um, and bring another player. Means you can still change five times um, after that. The other team has an extra sub. I I, I think that's the best we can do. About the uh, when you say now it takes quite a while between getting the concussion and that is really um, uh, kicking in um, I'm not sure 15 minutes is then the, the time to, to wait for so then people tell you uh, after an hour it kicks in that's I think how we do it is the right way and it doesn't happen that often to be 100% honest I can't, I can't remember one before it's now the first time it was the, the way Millie got hit. But when did we have a concussion before? I can't, I can't remember it. So we can talk about it like it happens all the time and the boys are constantly in danger. They are not. They're well-trained athletes and it, it, it doesn't happen that often. But if it happens, we have a solution for it, which is much better than ever before in football's history. It's a space for improvement, probably, but I don't know how. Last one for Neil Jones, then, of the embargo section. Obviously, it's, it's two weeks until the start of the World Cup, and 
I don't like, I, I hate this subject. Okay. Well, can I still ask a question from, from my point of view? Uh, to, is there anything you can do to balance that? No. The, the threats of players or no. the demands of, of the team? No. That's it. I, 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 <laughs> these problems were so clear. They were so clear. And nobody mentioned it for one time until three, four weeks before the World Cup. When all of a sudden players get, get injured and they say, oh, they cannot play the World Cup. Ooh. So this specific problem that players who are late injured in a season and can't play the World Cup is, is not new. So after a long season, it happens everywhere in the world. But now, starting the World Cup a week after the last game, oh, that's a big risk. Crazy. Nobody cares about us, how we deal with it. And you, you ask me all the question, and if I give you all the answers and these kind of things, what, what do you think what I shall do? Ask the players before Southampton or now before Derby. Really? Want to play? Man. So, yeah, but what's the situation? You asking a question is one. But all the, you, we are all guilty, and you more than I am guilty, for letting it happen. Letting it happen in the first place. Oh, and now it's happened. Now we have to... Uh, the situation and that's it and we have to get uh, along with it and Paul, uh, the players who get injured and cannot play is a, is a disaster but how can we change that?